History Spotlight, brought to you by HEC Media and the Missouri Historical Society. Hello, I'm Dr. Jody Sowell, president of the Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis, and this is History Spotlight. The infamous Dred Scott case started in the St. Louis Circuit Court in 1846. Public historian Cecily Hunter tells us how this case came to be and what resulted from it. So what began in the St. Louis Circuit Court went all the way to the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, and ultimately ushered in the onset of the Civil War. Dred Scott was enslaved to the Blow family for many years, and then he went on to be sold to Dr. Emerson. Dr. Emerson was a surgeon, and so he traveled. So he went to Illinois and was stationed on a base there. And then he went to the Wisconsin Territory. And that's where Dred Scott met and married Harriet Scott. And they resided in the Wisconsin Territory for some time. Because the slaveholder was moving around because he was a surgeon, they would come back to St. Louis. And ultimately, that's when both Dred Scott and Harriet Scott put forth cases in the circuit court Ultimately, they would argue that because of what was determined by the 1824 court case, Winnie v. Whiteside, once free, always free. So essentially, if they were able to be brought to a free state, then they by proxy should be able to be free people. There had been many cases just in St. Louis alone that people were arguing for their freedom. You have people emancipating themselves by the court. You have people self-emancipating. You have people having everyday forms of resistance. And even still, despite that, they're still pushed back on the legal side. And so they made that similar case. This was an 11-year court proceeding, which ultimately determined that Dred Scott, Harriet Scott, and their children were considered to be enslaved people and not citizens of the United States. And it sent shockwaves throughout the country. To have it stamped as that they are not considered to be citizens reinforced the institution of slavery in everyday living situations and so forth. So a year following the Supreme Court's decision, Dred Scott and his family are actually then transferred to the Blow family. Taylor Blow emancipates them, and for about a year, Dred Scott would live to be a free man before he passed away. Harriet Scott would live until about 1867. His body was then interned at Calvary Cemetery. Next week on History Spotlight, the reason for the St. Louis Baby Tooth Survey of the 1960s. To learn more about the Missouri Historical Society, visit mohistory.org.